per NFL Network's Peter Schrager, the Houston Texans have requested an interview with Super Bowl 44 winning head coach with the Saints, Sean Payton, who's currently an analyst with Fox Sports. It can't happen until January 17th or later since he's still considered an employee of the New Orleans Saints. But per Nick Underhill, who covers the New Orleans Saints, he has accepted the request. Huzzah! Welcome into the Paul Gallant Show on this Thursday, January 12th of 2023. It's exciting news because, I mean, things aren't things aren't great here when it comes to the football team in town. Sean Maves behind the glass. I have a question for you as a fellow Sean. What have you thought of Sean Payton over his past decade and a half as one of the top head coaches in the NFL. I, I would say that. He was consistently probably a top five head coach for most of his time in the NFL. Uh, maybe top five, top six, seven, you know, right around there. In the in the kind of Harbaugh, Tomlin kind of, you know, group of coaches where you're like, hey, they're one of the best. You're not looking to fire them ever. But, like, they're not Belichick. Name brand coach, you're right. Not Belichick. But we're talking about one of the guys that you at the very least recognize when his name is brought up. And you realize that the guy did a lot. He came into an organization that for years and years, although there was a nice little stretch in the late 90s, early 2000s for the Saints, just a couple of years. with I think Jim Hazlitt as head coach, Aaron Brooks as quarterback, you had Joe Horn too. Like there were some nice moments, but they weren't great moments. Sean Payton takes over, and I mean, post-Hurricane Katrina – changes the perception of the Saints across the NFL. He's done it before. Was it the expectation? I'm not sure that the Saints thought that they were going to get what they got in Sean Payton. But look, guy's done a damn good job as a coach in this league. And that lends us to today's question on the most interactive sports talk show in Houston. Is Sean Payton, if you are the Houston Texans, still worth trading draft picks for? And how much should the Texans be willing to to give up for him. Now, of course, he would have to want to take on the Houston Texans coaching gig, but I do think of all the jobs available, laid it out yesterday, that the Texans' job is the second most attractive one to that of the Carolina Panthers. I think that the deeper checkbook that you got in Carolina is something that Dave Tepper is definitely going to spare no expense for. But interesting thing, I, I don't know if the... I don't know if the Carolina Panthers are going to be able to get Sean Payton away from the New Orleans Saints. That might be the one team where the Saints say, nah, you ain't going there. But is that something that you'd like to see happen? He would bring relevance to a team in the Texans that hasn't been here in a few years. He would bring some excitement along with him. So I asked the question on Facebook.com slash Paul Gallant Sports, Twitter.com slash Gallant Says. And here are some of the first answers that I got. Jimmy said, it doesn't matter. He isn't coming after giving away all their draft picks for him. And then none to rebuild with. He would be shooting himself in the foot. That's ridiculous. The Texans have a ton of draft picks. They have two first-round picks this year, five picks in the first three rounds. They're not going to give up that much, you would think, for a Sean Payton. But they could get into a bidding war, so maybe they'll have to give up a little bit more than just one pick, like was being floated out there by, I think, um, the wheelhouse. They had that conversation yesterday afternoon. You also heard on the bench earlier today, I think there was the idea of, would you trade the 12th overall pick for Sean Payton? Joe said, bleep no, unless he starts sacking quarterbacks or passing touchdowns. Nick said, hell no. Interesting, the pushback. And while I do think Sean Payton would make the Houston Texans much more relevant and give them something that they haven't had in a head coach ever, a good one. He's the best head coach by default in team history if they're able to pull the trigger on the deal. He is. Dom Capers, nah. Gary Kubiak? Some decent years, but for the most part, nah. Bill O'Brien, hell nah. David Culley, Lovey Smith. I mean, 
Come on. Even the interims, we love Wade Phillips, Romeo Cornell, but nah. The biggest whiplash, I think, in the NFL would be going from David Culley promoting your defensive coordinator, Lovey Smith, and then hiring the most attractive coaching candidate on the market. Sean Payton, Super Bowl winner. It definitely means that your situation isn't as bad as maybe we all believe it to be. And look, we're down bad right now. I think we assume everything that has to do with the Houston Texans is going to end in failure. And I totally understand that line of thinking. You are becoming Jets fans, which is the worst thing to be in life. Downtrodden losers. Although, at least Jets fans have a weird sense of optimism despite consistently having their face rubbed in poop. I'm the man in the box, shove my head in poop. Those aren't the actual lyrics, but anyway, you get what I'm saying here. I did have this thought with Sean Payton, though. I've always felt he's a tad overrated. And think about my perspective. I am the bougiest football fan there is. I am a quarterback snob. I think anyone who's not in Tom Brady's class stinks. Probably not a good way to go about things, right? And in the past, I have felt the same thing about Bill Belichick. Constantly watching football with the rich. And all of a sudden, you find yourself out on the street eating scraps with that of the Houston Texans. Maybe your perspective changes a little bit, but I've always thought Peyton was a tad overrated. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to go see if I can make a strong argument as to why the Houston Texans shouldn't trade Sean Payton. Here's the thing, though. I couldn't do it. I actually couldn't do it, and I looked hard. And pat myself on the back. I'm one of those people who actually will change my opinion based off the information in front of me. I thought to myself, you know what? His playoff record should be a little bit better, right? But then you take a look at the games that they've lost. The Saints have always competed in playoff games. Always. And there might have been someone holding them back along the way in some of those playoff games. <clears throat> Drew Brees. Yeah, for as much as you want to like write off some of Peyton's early success uh, with Drew Brees, which is you know fair, but I mean also he's the guy who wanted Drew Brees when anyone in the league could have had him. Uh, I also think that Drew Brees kind of works in his favor towards the end of Drew Brees' Seriously. career. Because he was kind of dragging Drew Brees along. Brees was an anchor to Sean Payton the last couple of years that Payton was with the New Orleans Saints. They beat the Bucs in 2020, the first Brady year. They beat the Bucs with basically any, like, good, competent quarterback. Right, and he threw three interceptions in that game, so the Saints lose in the playoffs even though they beat the Bucs twice in the regular season. So that's the last time we saw Sean Payton in the playoffs. They lost in overtime to the Vikings in 2020 at home. That game also on Drew Brees. They lost that close game in overtime to the Rams. Saints fans complain constantly and tiresomely, yet had Jared Goff peeing his pants in the Superdome. You shouldn't have lost that game with the way that that game opened up. I get it that that call was BS, but you peed your pants after Jared Goff peed his pants, and guess who threw the interception in overtime that allowed the Rams to win that game? Drew Brees. You have that ridiculous last-second touchdown loss to the Minnesota Vikings where Case Keenum throws that touchdown pass to Stephon Diggs. Can you really hold that against Sean Payton? Go further back in the playoffs. They lost that classic game to the San Francisco 49ers in 2012 there's four touchdowns in the last four minutes by each team that game was awesome they lost in 2014 to the Seattle Seahawks who go on to win the Super Bowl with an all-time defense Drew Brees wasn't beating that one they at least were close in 06 that was I think Peyton's first year in the NFC championship game against the Bears it was 14-16 until it wasn't they lost 39 to 14 in that game they lost on the road to the 500 Seahawks in 2011 with the Beast Quake game. That's when Marshawn Lynch had that ridiculous touchdown run. Those two games you look at, you're like, okay, eh, those aren't ideal. But for the most part, I mean, Peyton teams, while maybe not the best playoff record, talking 9-8 and eight all time with one Super Bowl win, one Super Bowl appearance, I, I think you could say that it's never been Peyton's fault that they've lost in the playoffs. Honestly, 9-8 and is really good. In it the is. Playoffs. But being above 500 in the playoffs is 
I mean, because that means you advance one round before you lose. One and done twice. I mean, it's it's a pretty impressive playoff resume. And I remember thinking to myself going into this, you know what? I'm going to find some things to nitpick with Sean Payton's playoff career, and that can be a part of my argument as to why the Texans shouldn't trade for him. Has Sean Payton gotten the most out of his quarterback? In particular, an undersized quarterback with the Texans maybe able to take Bryce Young with the second overall pick. Yes, I said it before. I'll say it again. I think Drew Brees is largely overrated. I feel like Drew Brees took advantage of the fact that he played in a dome, and I think that Sean Payton figured out a way to make things work for Drew Brees. You might wonder, why did Brees have such an amazing completion percentage? Why did he have the statistics that he did? Well, if you look at Payton's history, one of the things that Payton always found a way to do was to turn running backs into actual wide receivers. It started off with Reggie Bush. I always thought in college when he was at USC that Reggie Bush could be an awesome wide receiver if they moved him over to that. And Reggie Bush was getting like 80 targets a year in his first couple of seasons with the Saints. But it wasn't just Reggie Bush that Sean Payton found a way to maximize the skill set of. Pierre Thomas, take a look at his receiving numbers over the course of his career. Darren Sproles. In 2013... Do you know how many catches Pierre Thomas and Darren Sproles had combined? Sean, ballpark. Give me a guess. I'm going to say combined probably like 75, 80. 148 combined <laughs> catches in 2013. 140 bleeping eight. Again, Breeze made a lot of out of nothing in his career. Credit to him. Lots of statistics. But don't tell me Sean Payton wasn't the one helping him out by creating an offense with great running backs and great routes to get the ball to running backs out in the open field. Like, Breeze was always throwing to running backs. After that, Mark Ingram, C.J. Spiller, Traveris Cadet to an extent, Alvin Kamara. Guess who the Houston Texans have at running back who might be an awesome, use him whatever way you can kind of player? Rex Burkett. No, I'm kidding. Damian Pierce. So you got a damn good running back and you have a head coach that I think always figured out a way to get the most out of the running backs that he had. Like the Saints have had pretty good running backs over the years and he would use them in sort of like a stable kind of fashion. I think that means that the Texans would probably, if Peyton were to come in, look at another running back. But I was looking for a strong argument to make against Sean Payton. The guy had a good playoff record. He did a pretty good job in a NFC South that outside of the Bucks for the 15 years that he was there until, of course, they got Tom Brady, was pretty competitive. The Panthers made a Super Bowl. The Falcons made a Super Bowl. I think the Panthers won a couple of division titles. Maybe it was four. The Falcons won three division titles. But the Saints won the most division titles. I think the Texans should pull the trigger if he wants to come here. How much would it cost? I don't know. I would imagine you're going to have to trade a pick and that Peyton maybe to do a favor to the Saints might say like, well, I'm open to a couple of different possibilities. Hey, New Orleans, you 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 send me wherever I want to go. But Peyton does have the final say here. I think that this is this is an intriguing possibility. Is it the one that I would definitively go after? No. I do like the idea of Lions offensive coordinator Ben Johnson, who's going to meet with the Texans. I like the idea of Giants offensive coordinator Mike Kafka. We talked about it yesterday. I like the idea of a guy who can MacGyver together an offense with not that much of a supporting cast. But, I mean, Peyton's been doing that his whole career. Drew Brees isn't that good. And on top of that, that team was always competitive despite a couple of times where the NFL may have screwed them over. Bounty Gate was ridiculous. Peyton shouldn't have been punished for that. That was all Greg Williams, who everyone would agree is the absolute worst. But the, the NFC Championship game, again, I'll say it over and over again. Shut the bleep up, Saints fans. Like, you you peed your pants in that game. You had the lead. Jared Goff like, was like, whoa, what's going on, Sean? I don't know what's happening. Whoa. You could see it. You couldn't hear what was going on. Sean McVay was basically telling him every single play, hey, here's what you call, here's what you do, for the entirety of his career when those two were together. And, of course, you saw some great years with Jared Goff, but that was a part of it. It was like in Men in Black when you had that little alien guy who's inside the head of that one dude. You know, like that was Sean McVay and Jared Goff. And you should have beaten Jared Goff in that game. Anyway, that's a side tangent. Sean Payton's going to interview with the Cardinals, Kyler Murray, mm -hmm. the Broncos, Russell Wilson. Oh, wow. And then now the Texans. Who might get Bryce Young. Who might get Bryce Young or 
you know, they could get Shroud or Levis or even get in there with Derek Carr or Jameis, I guess. Yeah. It, it, I mean, Jameis, they could really go anywhere with it, whoever he wants. And it does come down to, like, does Sean Payton want to still coach a small quarterback or would he prefer a six foot three, six foot four quarterback? And he just had success with Drew Brees, but that's not optimally what he wants. Right. I, I, I think any coach, if they had their pick, would want a bigger guy. And look, Peyton wanted Breeze. Peyton made the most with Breeze. It's not saying that Breeze doesn't deserve any credit for what he did along the way, but I think Breeze is overrated. Uh, Mega, in very routine, um, to be expected fashion, is bringing up that Tom Brady cheated. They went to nine Super Bowls, dude. Like, come on. Yeah. Also, uh, Bounty Gate. Yeah, Saints did cheat, too. They were killing players. The only time they won the Super Bowls. Right. They were... Yeah, they killed Brett Favre. Hit the head and the body will die. That is a uh, famous Greg Williams quote. Sean Payton was asked on Fox what he's looking for with his next head coaching gig. Here's what he had to say. I think that it's really about the triangular relationship, ownership, front office, head coach. Uh, when we went to New Orleans, and I say we because there were a lot of people involved, the quarterback was unsettled at that time. So I, I think ownership and uh, the functionality of, of the front office is most important. Well... That's not good. <laughs> I mean, outside looking in, it doesn't look good no matter how you want to spin it. And that's something that the Texans are going to have to get over. But Peyton did accept the interview request, so you have that at the very least. It really is just like someone who's way out of your league just being like, okay, fine, I'll talk to you. You're yeah. like, oh, okay. Didn't, didn't expect to get this far. And it could be just one date, but hey, the one date's fine. You'll get a little closure out of it, and at the very least, you were excited for a couple of days. Yeah, it feels about good. The possibilities, yeah. Walking around being like, yeah, you know, we're, we got a date with Sean Payton in one week. Now, it sucks when you get ghosted after that. And, oh, I mean, your yeah. boy's been uh, very much through that often where you're like, oh, this date was great. This is the end. This is the, this is the first date of the rest of my life. And then, like, ghosted. And then, you know, just sad, crying, holding okay. a cat. Okay, we need we need drinking to tell some wine. Nick, yeah, <laughs> Nick Casario, like, hey, don't get don't get your hopes too. Don't uh, get them too high. Seriously, no matter what happens. This don't. is where I'm at now. Like, I always tell myself, this is going nowhere. Nothing's gonna happen. Everything's bad. Just assume the worst. You'll never be disappointed in life, and that's what the Texans and Nick Casario should do. Question of today's show, and it will be on the table all day long. Should the Houston Texans consider trading draft picks to bring Sean Payton in? I think they should consider it. I really do. I tried to make the argument against it today, and I couldn't when I was looking up information and Peyton's background, looking for pieces of evidence to use against him. I couldn't find it. I think I found reasons, in fact, that this is the guy. And one last thought. So how many of y'all were alive in 1993? I was four, so I didn't know what the hell was going on there. But as someone who is a lover of football history, you might have remembered that Bill Parcells had stepped away from the New York Giants in 1991 and came back to take over the biggest joke in the NFL, the New England Patriots, in 1993. It did help that they got Drew Bledsoe with the first overall pick in that draft. Parcells was 52 at the time. I know that Sean Payton's 59. He's a little bit older. Maybe he doesn't want to do a rebuild, but the Patriots would not have become the Patriots if Bill Parcells did not take over as the head coach of that team. That franchise has changed completely since Bill Parcells took over. There's no denying that. Having someone like Sean Payton in, I feel like that is a great step towards restoring relevance to this franchise and maybe getting yourself on the right track with somebody who has all the pelts on the wall. Yeah, you'd like more Super Bowls out of him. Belichick was winning them all over the past couple of decades. Payton's a damn good coach. I think he's worth the draft picks.